termites. Merry Christmas. Did you guys have a good Christmas? Are you jealous of my blinking hat? It says STL Cardinals right there. This is like two years old. I have as people ask where I got it. And I don't remember like MLB something. You can find them on eBay. They had every team, not just the Cardinals. But I really get excited to pull it out uh, all of December. And I don't take it off till January 1st. Well, I mean, not every minute of the day, but, you know, the blinking part. Matter of fact, I pulled up the next, <laughs> next to somebody at an intersection, and he looked at me real weird, and it wasn't even blinking. And then I reached up, and I turned the little battery thing on and got a big smile. It was worth every penny. So, um, well, we start the show with the Dolly quote. Now, see, I did find one in here that's the oldest joke in the book, so I don't, I see, I'm on a seafood diet. I see it and eat it. Come on. That's like... Jackie Gleason or some bullshit or Shecky Green or be before Shecky Green. So I don't know, but it says it's witty quotes from Dolly Parton. Here's one on dieting. I tried every diet in the book. I tried that. I tried some that weren't in the book. I tried eating the book. It tasted better than most of the diets. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go get a real one. I don't know. This was given to me, and I don't know that it's real. But you know what I can only do? This is not a professional operation. I keep trying to stress that. It's free. <laughs> it's semi-professional. Semi. Like there's equipment and stuff. I'm going to show you guys. What did I get for Christmas? Well, here's a couple things. The Billionaire Murders. What? This book is about the Canadian couple, Honey and Barry Sherman that were murdered in 2017, and we nobody's figured it out. The Toronto police, the Toronto police, as it turns out, were very busy with their um, serial killer that was killing all the gay guys, and that's why uh, when they went over on the day of this murder, they didn't even send their best detectives because those detectives were busy trying to find a gay serial killer guy who they did end up finding. Um, but like some of the people, according to this book, were like from the fraud department. You know, white collar crimes. So I don't. Oh, can, a Canada, love you, but um, the Toronto Police Department not looking very good in this book. Now that's not speaking for other places, just Toronto. But this book is great. Um, so far, so good. But in real life, we know we still don't know who killed him. But on November twentieth, they announced that they have identified a person of suspect. Then the following day, they said, "Persons, come on, Toronto." You can't tell people it's one person, then it's two people, and Jesus Christ. Then look what else I got. I got this, and it's out of print. Dolly Parton's Dixie Fictions. It's Dixie Fictions. And there's a whole, it's a cookbook. I don't even cook, but I can follow directions. Um, I don't really think grape juice is, should be, does that count? Um, best ever featherweight biscuits. Old-fashioned cornbread, light. Oh, good. Skillet cornbread. Oh, there's pictures of Dolly cooking, too. Tennessee taters. Sure. Roasted taters and string beans. I love a string bean. Pickled peaches. No, thank you. Cow peas. That's what we call black-eyed peas in the Smokies. I love them made up this way. Made up this way. Tasting of smoked bacon a bit from hot chili, a few chili. Beans. So this is going to be great. So... If this was only 25 bucks back in the day, 2006, and now it's like 150 bucks if you can find it online. I do not know why she would not reprint this. I know she doesn't like the word Dixie anymore because she found out that could be semi-offensive to people. So she just take it out then. Just have Dolly's fixings. Love, laughter, and lots of good food from a Tennessee mountain kitchen. Hmm. There you have it, folks. What are you going to make for... Um, I liked the idea of her... Um, Cornbread, but it's pretty fat though. I don't know. Dill and shower cream potato salad. She loves potatoes. So do I though, but you can't eat it every day. You weigh a thousand pounds. Um, it did, this is what she wrote on the back. At this point in my life, I've tasted just about everything under the sun from squid and oysters, which I won't eat unless they're fried, to foie gras and white asparagus. <laughs> I like to try new foods as often as I can, but when it comes to cooking for myself and my husband, Carl, and my great big extended family, which numbers into the multiple hundreds these days, what we really want to eat is what comforts us most. Good, hearty food rooted in mama's cooking and those country gatherings of my childhood. 
It's the food from those mom and pop joints that welcome you in as if you're family. We just want to, that food is lovingly made and jolly, jolly, joyfully served up. So you, when you make it, you better get happy because it doesn't count if it's not joyfully served up. Around here, that's what we call Dixie Fictions. So there you go. If you guys want to hunt for this, um, good luck. It's hard to find, and it ain't cheap. Maybe I'll share some of the recipes as we go, and then you don't have to buy it. Because you can't buy it anyway. It's not like we're screwing Dolly out of money. Okay, well, what are we drinking? The pub is open. I always forget to scream that at the beginning because I'm so focused on the Dolly quote. Because one time I didn't do it, and then people yelled at me. Termites started yelling. <laughs> And then somebody started yelling, you already read that one. And they were right. Whoever yelled that, they were 100% right. Let me get this out of the way. I'm so excited. I'm already like, uh, I'd say a third through the berry and uh, Honey Sherman murder book. I'll be watching that while watching, reading that while watching football. What are we drinking today? That's what I forgot. Well, we're having a Bloody Mary with what? Are you guys anywhere near Pittsburgh? Are you? You don't even have to go to Pittsburgh, but it's Briny Bloody Mary Mix, a Pittsburgh pickle company. And it's a Bloody Mary Mix infused with Pittsburgh pickle company brine. <gasps> oh my God. The pickle part is so good. Love it. It's like a, just, a, just a sodium bomb made for the ages. It's so good. Um, have you ever had James, Jameson with a pickle back? Yes. Delicious. Um, but then I realized after I shot two shots at Jameson, really, I like the pickle juice better. I should just shoot pickle juice out of my own refrigerator. Then you don't have to deal with the hangover. What are we eating? Well, now this, Lay's potato chips are my favorite out of all potato chips. I don't know about this. Salted caramel flavored. You know what? I'm going to try one. My dad says that if any kind of, this is what he's told us our whole life, if you have any kind of stomach issues or stomach ache, whatever, eat a bag of Lay's potato chips and drink a Coke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Works for Jack. He's still alive. No. Yeah. Well, if you're into sweet, see, this, de- this defeats the purpose of a potato chip to me. A potato chip is supposed to be salty. Um... Now they're sweet, but I don't know if you have a sweet tooth. There you go. This made me laugh. I didn't even know. Hidden Valley Ranch. They make a blasted creamy dipping sauce. This is it with ranch uh, ranch dip pizza flavor. Oh, yes. Right? So it's ranch, but it tastes like pizza. I think it's going to be delicious. And anytime I see ranch, all I can think of is my sister's teenage girls her friend my sister's friends teenage girls came over for like two nights in a row and it didn't matter what we were eating all they would do is go do you have any ranch that's all they said to me for two days not hey so i really like your boat or hey your house looks nice or no hi do you have any ranch and then i did that for like a year no matter what my sister would say to me i just go do you have any ranch I'm really upset because I don't think the girls are paying attention in school or girls and their grades. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's great. But do you have any ranch? <laughs> Dad has to have another surgery in October. Do you think you could do that? Do you have any ranch? <laughs> <laughs> so fucking dismissive. Do you have any ranch? <laughs> so I think I'm going to report back on this. I haven't opened it because it was Christmas week. And I, there's too much food around here, so I'm going to save this for a boring week when I have nothing. I'm also drinking a what? Miller 64 beer back. I know people are going to go, I, I understand that Miller 64 is not a, quote, good beer. Okay, people? It's just a beer, but that's fine. Sometimes I just, I don't want a heavy beer. I don't want a real, it just tastes like, you know, beer water. And it's a, it's a great breakfast beer because you're not drunk. It's, it has less percentage alcohol than any of them. And it's only 64 calories. How about that? I gave it to my friend Pat. He loved it. And Pat cares about beer. It tastes, but I think it tastes better than Mick Ultra. <gasps> I know. I know. I'm t- t- stepping up. But now if I drink any other beer than this, I'm like, ugh. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
tell my one friend Bob imitates his brother. Whenever he talks about his brother, he just says the guy's name and goes, Bleh! Family love. <laughs> totally family. All right, what do we got going on, termites? Well, it's a big week. It's a very big week. Update. The jetpack guy in L.A. is out and about again. Oh. And he has um, been filmed. So this is not... And I asked my friend Drew, who drew in the Fantasy League, which our Fantasy League, by the way, has just um, dismantled. I mean, it's still together, but nobody understands the playoffs. It's all, And then people are on COVID list. It's, it's a mess. Um, Drew's a financial guy, but Drew also has his pilot's license. And I said, Drew, could a dude really be flying around in a jetpack all around Los Angeles? Thing is, when you ask my friend Drew a question, prepare for a 45-minute answer, no matter what the question Drew, do you like the color blue? Well, you know, Maddie, it depends. Depends on what we're talking about. Depends on what context. Depends on who's asking. Yeah, but he is funny. But he said, yeah, because this guy is at 3,000 feet, this jetpack guy. And if you think about it, when you're in Colorado, half the time you're at 5,000 feet. So you can survive without any kind of, you can fly your little jetpack anywhere you want. Or is it like a mannequin attached to a drone i don't know the videos online siding off palace verdes which is in california so if you picture la uh he's going over the ocean this thing is going over water so if it's a human i'd be scared shitless if i'm at three thousand feet over the ocean but you know they kept saying pilots kept reporting seeing this and now they have video of it and the video the dude is f- going very fast um Here's the story. When it comes to weird stories that keep getting weirder, the elusive jetpack guy of L.A. pretty much takes the cake. After multiple reports of a airline pilot on more than one occasion of a guy in a jetpack flying around at thousands of feet near LAX, that's the airport, some of the mo- most congested airspace on Earth. That's another problem. Palos Verdes is down by the airport. So he is somewhere, or at least that's where he's starting. Um, but it's dangerous, too, because there's planes out there, and then you're freaking out the pilots, and... As well as going ongoing FAA, FAA and FBI investigations in the matter, we now have credible um, video of what seems to be the flying object in question. The footage doesn't come to us from some random Reddit board or YouTube channel either. It was taken during an instructional flight from Sling Pilot Academy in the training area off Palos Verdes. So he's, it's a real flight school. We reached out to the flight school, which is based in... Uh, In Torrance, for additional details, one of the pilots involved in the bizarre incident told the war zone that they were flying along their route practiced in the practice area between Palos Verde and Catalina Island. So Catalina is like an island. That's where, um, what's her face? Natalie Wood died or was murdered. You tell me. Robert Wagner's still alive. Just saying. I I think he's still alive. Um, So... This is really far out over the ocean, like far, far. Um, if you're in a jetpack, you'd have to be scared shitless if it's a real person. Um, when they caught what it appeared to at least resemble a guy in the jetpack flying towards them in the opposite direction at about 3,000 feet, the object passed along the right side of the aircraft and kept going till it was out of sight. There was no communication from the object or about the object on the usually busy radio channel used for the training area. As such... The pilots did report the encounter with the FAA because it was, was, wasn't really any detail to add and the official report was not filed. They were able to grab the video scene below. If for some reason it doesn't show up in your browser, you can click here. Um, a guy flying over the ocean in a jetpack or at around 3,000 feet, especially when without any lifting surfaces, is a puzzling proposition to say the least. Jetpacks do exist that do exist have very short ranges and they're not equipped to be flying in dense airspace, especially at thousands of feet in the air. Is it possible that some sort of drone dressed up to look like a guy in a jetpack? Then the question becomes, why would someone be doing this? Well, I mean, in this day and age, I just sounded like I was 100 saying that. But seriously, let's just stop asking why people are doing shit. The answer is, who fucking knows? It could be... It's like my friend Drew says. Here's how Drew views... um, 
the economy and how we're going to spend our money. And I think this applies to big family as well, big families as well. And this applies to the EU. When you join up a group, you just have to assume that 10% of the group can't, won't, or don't. It's a great, great, great bullseye description of any group. 10% can't, won't, or don't. To sit around and talk about why they can't, can't, won't, or don't is a waste of your goddamn time. Just accept it, pay the bill, move on for the group. This is the same crap, though. Why would someone be doing this? What could be, possibly be worth the risk? Well, there's no risk if it's not a real person. If it's your drone and, you know, you've made this awesome drone. Also, it's not like executing that such a feat would be cheap or simple. I, that I agree with. It's pricey. In, the ca- in this case, the craft wasn't even flying over a populated area. It was out to sea where there are far fewer eyes to even recognize it. Maybe, the, again, this is something altogether. Maybe it's a goddamn alien. Huh? Anybody? Nothing? But then again, maybe this is something. That, yeah. Let us know what you think. And then there weren't that many comments or I would read them. I don't know what it is, but I think we'll find out an answer. But I'm sick of sitting around going, why did this person do that? People are crazy. And then you put a pandemic and people are locked up. People, I saw a guy online, which I thought was pretty cool. In Iowa, he was dressed up in a rabbit outfit and he had a flamethrower melting the snow in his driveway. (laughs) And it was taken forever, but it was working. But I mean, that's that's when you've reached a state of boredom. (laughs) Because there's not as much to do. And I don't know why I have as many pens. You know, you can't expect rational explanations in irrational times. Somebody write that down. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Update on our little Michigan militia. <laughs> Turns out, you want to act like a jackass? You're going to get in big, big trouble. This story is from Traverse City, Michigan. You guys know where that's at? It's up north. I've worked there quite a few times. I really like Traverse City. And one time I went up there years and years and years ago. And there was a theater. Like it's a downtown, little Main Street, like a Hallmark movie. Bigger than a Hallmark town, but just as adorable. And uh, the kid who picked me up to take me to the theater gig was very nice. And we were at a stoplight. And this man walked across the street. And I, I go holy shit, that guy looks like Michael Moore. And then the kid goes, it is Michael Moore. I said, oh, oh, right, he's from Michigan. And I said, why are these people lined up? There were people lined up for, I can't even tell you how far, a half a mile probably? And Traverse City's just not that big. It's not like we're in Detroit or even Grand Rapids or Kalamazoo. It's, it's small. And he said, oh, well, Madonna's coming to debut her movie and these people want to see Madonna. I said, for real? Now I want to see Madonna, right? This is way back in the day. Um, but I had to work. Wonk, wonk, so I did not get to see Madonna. Anyway, this story comes from Traverse City. A grand jury has charged six men with conspiracy to kidnap Governor Gretchen. Gretchen Whitmer. In what investigators say was a plot by anti-government extremists who were angry over her coronavirus policies. That's my best northern Michigan uh, accent. Anyway, the indictment released Thursday by the U.S. attorney levied conspiracy charges. Conspiracy charges against these six guys. We don't need to go through all their names. They're all from Michigan except for Croft, who lives in Delaware. Somebody drove in from Delaware to get involved with these jack straws. Wow. Worth it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. The charge carries a maximum penalty in life in prison. The six were arrested in early October following an FBI investigation into an alleged plot to, plot to kidnap. We've covered this on this podcast. They were going to take her and then extradite her. One, they had a lot of plans. A lot of plans that didn't have endings. A lot of start of plans. The other one was they were going to go put her in a boat and dismantle the power of the boat and just set her afloat in Lake Michigan. Defense attorneys have said their clients were big talkers who didn't intend to follow through on the alleged plan. Now, I do think there's a lot of that going on. A lot of talky talk, bad talky. A lot of uh, big mouth, you know, too much online uh, um, encouragement, let's say. However, not going to go along with that. It's one thing if you're just chattering on Facebook. It's still shitty and bad, and you should get in some sort of trouble. But if that's all you were doing, 
well, maybe we don't put you in prison for life. Maybe we have a little talkie with you. But that's not what they were doing. The indictment repeats allegations made during an October hearing where Agent Rissard testified that the men were involved with paramilitary groups. Um, not only were they um, talking, um, the leader of the Michigan group called the Wolverine Watchmen. Now, that's too bad, because I like Wolverine involved in any kind of labeling. So they've ruined that. Um, they were working towards common goals. It is live fire field training exercises and other preparations, uh, including the surveillance of Whitmer's vacation house and the exchange of encrypted messages. During one training event, they practiced assaulting a building in teams and discussed tactics for fighting the governor's security detail with improvised explosives, a projectile launcher, and other weapons. They also discussed destroying a highway bridge near Whitmer's house to prevent law enforcement from responding. The indictment in the indictment says that in an electronic message, he wrote that if the men encountered police during a reconnaissance mission, they should give the officers one opportunity to leave and then kill them if they don't comply. Listen, they're even using cop. They're even using cop talk. You know, the way the subject didn't comply. Uh, eight men, and there's other one charged. Char- some are charged with lethar- lesser charges because they didn't get involved in all this. But I mean, once you start doing paramilitary exercises and you have weapons, we've gone beyond a Facebook chat group. And you know what? You, you don't want the FBI. Trumpy can tell you the FBI is corrupt all he wants, but I still believe in the FBI, and I still believe in the CIA, and I'm scared shitless of them if you do bad things. I do believe they still can figure out what they're doing some of the time. Not all the time. <laughs> Update. On the minks. Yep. Some of them have escaped. Yep. What? Yep. That's the problem. These are the ones with COVID. COVID. Mm-hmm. One wild mink escaped. Eight other animals also escaped the farm, and they have COVID. <sighs> it's re- it reportedly escaped this mink from a mink farm in Oregon that has been under quarantine since 10 mink samples tested positive near the end of November. Now, this may st- sound stupid. They're kind of cute in a cage, too. I had no idea. A, people were still buying mink coats. I thought that stopped when movies started being in color. Like, isn't that from, like, It's a Wonderful Life? Or who the fuck? Maybe Russians. I guess Asians are big into it in Asia. They want um, mink coats. Rappers. Hmm? Rappers. Right, rappers. Snoop Snoop. Yeah, but are they real? Snoop Dogs. We don't know that. Don't say that about him if you don't know that to be true. We'll get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Along with the afflicted mink, three cats, five wild possums also escaped from the quarantine farm, though none of the other animals had tested positive. Well, have they been tested? It's beyond outrageous that an infected mink can escape from a quarantine fur farm, putting an untold range of wild animals at risk of contracting the virus. So that's what, the, what what's happening, though. Is the mink going to make out with, like, a deer? As much as I hope this case is just limited to one mink they tested in the wild, so they found one in the wild, and it's got it. We know that it's highly contagious, and one case grows quickly into many. Then all your minks are going to die, I get, or, or get sick, or I don't know. The ones that they killed, they didn't bury deep enough, and then they all they got the gases inside the dead minks started getting bigger, and they all rose from the dead like a zombie. Well, we already talked about that. Um, um, so that's it. We've got Oregon. If you see a mink... In the wild, which I didn't even know was possible. Run your ass off. Don't try to pick it up because it's cute. They are cute. The minks at the farm are believed to have contracted the coronavirus from a human, which is why the ODA is not releasing the name of the farm. They're protecting the private health of the status of the health status of the individual, the capital reports of the There are only eleven permit permitted mink farms in Oregon. Along and then it tells us what county. They're in um the only states that produce more pelt in Oregon are what? Wisconsin, Utah, and Idaho. Now, I have spent an inordinate amount of time in Wisconsin. I've spent a shitload of time, well, together, Idaho and Utah. There's enough gigs that I'd say a substantial amount of time. I didn't even, I had no idea we had mink farms. It's so strange. Idaho's different. It is. 
Um, the evidence that the coronavirus has the ability to mutate, which could negatively affect vaccines being rolled, acro- rolled out across the globe. South Africa and United Kingdom are among countries who have announced new strains of the vir- virus circulating with their respective borders. The United States, meanwhile, is still attempting to get a hold on the uh, get a hold on the initial outbreak. So that's just a warning. That's an update. The the minks are still a problem. I don't know why we're killing these little guys for mink coats. I guess that's a, that's a thing somewhere. Somebody's paying the money. No, my favorite segment, courtesy of who? Lewis Black, research unemployed comedian, currently employed as a research assistant for this show. He's not really technically employed because he doesn't get paid cash, but he does get paid in food. He has been sent cheese from Baltimore. He has been sent Kringles from Wisconsin. Lots of things have gone to him. He doesn't need any more alcohol. I've sent enough. The Kringles from Wisconsin were delicious, and it's called the Old Danish Bakery. This is not an ad. This is this is yeah. We'll put it in the show notes. This is serious. Um, somebody sent me one last year, and I thought they were made up in Hallmark movies. (laughs) It's like a pastry, like a circle, a ring. Picture a giant ring, and then whatever you want is inside of there: cherry, pecan, cheese, like cream cheese, and then there's this icing on top that. I might agree to lose all my teeth for that. If uh, my teeth rotted out over a Kringle, I'd say it was an even deal. Animals most likely to kill you in your state. Hawaii. Guess battles. Shark. What kind of shark? A white shark. A white shark? A great white. A great white. No, there's not enough of those. Bullhead. Bullhead? No, that's more Florida. A mean shark. Yes, you do. What? A mean shark. shark. (laughs) No. The answer is you're most likely in Hawaii to be killed by a tiger shark. shark. The CDC did not have all the information they needed accurately to to accurately document animal deaths in Hawaii. However, animal-related deaths. However, there are dangers in the ocean that you definitely need to avoid. On the rise has been attacked by tiger sharks, which can be related to the increased number of of water-based sports. Maui is where you can find the highest amount of tiger sharks as more sharks congregate there than all the other islands combined. Note to self, this is why. What does I, a tiger shark look like? It looks like a great white, except not as big. Really? Yeah. So is the ground like that? Its fin isn't as big. I'm not even on the picture I'm looking at here. It's a shark. I mean, if you saw it, you'd be scared shitless. You don't need to know. When it's, when it gets to be that close, it's too late. You're just either going to get eaten or you're not. Indiana. What do you think can kill you in Indiana? Farmers. Farmers? Yeah. Yeah. Rabid farmers. There's some weird ones. For sure. Nope. <sighs> it's kind of a lame answer. But when I think about Indiana, and I've worked everywhere there, South Bend, Evansville, Bloomington, Indianapolis. Coyote. No, not a coyote. This is kind of lame. But I'm thinking about it. They don't really have, like, once you get into the South Midwest, we have so many snakes and stuff. Um, Deer. What? Hitting them. Oh, well, it's animal re- it's animal-related deaths. Deer is a common sight in the state of Indiana. Well, it is in Missouri, too. Right. They contribute to the majority of vehicle collisions, frequently resulting in the death of, it, of the animal. However, in the cases of death, in cases of the death of humans as well. A report recently reported and indicated that over 14,000 vehicular accidents involve deer, mostly active around dawn and dusk. Right, everybody knows that. Times that people are on their way to work or from work and the visibility is quite low. Residents are encouraged to be extremely cautious on the roads during this time period. That is a that is a terribly boring answer, but truthful. And I think they're rounding. They're rounding up? No. People hit deer and that's how they die in Indiana. What are you going to do? Okay. This is kind of an update. It's not really, because I didn't really say it in the beginning, but so Tom Brady, Tommy Salami, as I like to call him, who won me a lot of money recently in football, he, him and Giselle, bought a giant hunk of land in Miami. 
Well, guess who else just moved in next door? Jervanka. That's right. <laughs> Ivanka and Jared have splurged on a 30 million plus lot of land on Miami's uber swanky and high security Indian Creek Island known as Billionaire's Bunker. Now, when I used to work down there, there was a place called Star Island. Is this the same island? Did they rename it? Did they rebrand it? Um, the private guarded gate is where uh, Indian Creek Island is also one of the most secure places in Florida as it boasts a 13-man police force for 29 residents. That's almost one cop per person. Jesus Christ, how paranoid are you? I need my own cop. You should have to bring your own. Do oh, I guess they pay these people. It's believed the couple's purchased lot four, which is owned by who? Julio Iglesias. No. To all the girls I've loved before <laughs> who've traveled in and out my door. My friend Tim Wilkins, very funny comedian, he opened for Julio for a long time. And I said, how was he? He said he was very nice. He said, but he was very, um, he was he had a thing about, you know, super punctuality, which I therefore like Julio even more for because I agree with that. Be on time. Late bugs the shit out of me. Um, but he said if he couldn't find, if he couldn't see Tim, <laughs> He would just start screaming in the hallway, team, team, team. Um, so now I only call team, team, when I text or write him, team, what are you? Team, we're about to have a show, team. Because <laughs> if you ever see my shows in Florida, you will see Tim Wilkins because he lives down there and he likes to um, come and be a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, opening act. Even though he's really a headliner, but he lives down there, so he does me favors, and it's very funny. Um, his funniest joke of mine, to me, um, he had one of his teenage boys was like, I'm moving out, Dad. I can go do this on my own. I don't need you. I'm moving out. So Tim was like, all right, go ahead. So the kid goes and gets an apartment. Like a month later, calls Tim, and he goes, Dad, I just got a bill for water. Can they do that? <laughs> It's so simple, and it's true, and it just makes me laugh every time because I think I can remember when I got my first apartment and got a water bill, and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's like the same way when I bought a house. I didn't understand you had to buy trees. I guess I just thought they came with it or they were there, but they're, they're not there. If you don't, if there's not enough trees, you have, they're expensive, too, a tree. Now it's all I do is drive around and look at trees and go, fuck. Like a giant magnolia, I'm like, that's probably a half a million dollars. Even if you could move it, you probably couldn't, but if you could. Anyway, so that's who's going to be on the island. Yep, it's uh, 1.84 acres, 200 feet of waterfront. Does it come with a dock? Hello. The lot was for sale at $38.1 million. Taxes are $472,000 a year. Now, here's the thing that I do find interesting about this. If you, if you follow the life of Donald... The Donald Trump. Donald's life was all about trying to get in and be cool in New York. And everybody saw he got invited to all the parties, the Met Gala, all that hoop to hoo shit. And he wanted to be part of that so badly. And then his kids want to be part. Ivanka wants to be in the Hamptons and da 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 da. I'm just wondering if his presidency didn't turn the tide. And I'm not sure the New York crowd, which tends to lean liberal, I think they're going to kind of they say them, and I think they lost their golden ticket. Not that I would give a shit about the golden ticket. I could care less about hanging out at the Met Gala. I don't think I would even go. Even if invited, I'd be like, nah, not for me. Um, but it sounds like they're being shunned. We'll have to see. This, I thought, is ridiculous, but it's true. And I had to reread it. Break dancing gets Olympic status to debut at Paris Games in 2024. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Break dancing. So I'm glad they the Olympics have caught up to 1989. <laughs> is, are, is are people still doing? They must be doing it somewhere. I guess. Is it a thing? Are, no. Break dancing became an official Olympic sport. How can you call it? It's not a sport. It's a dance. We're starting to blend. I do a whole thing in my act about it, about what's the definition of a sport? What is the definition of a game? What is just nonsense? This is 
fucking dancing. The IOC's pursuit of urban events. Oh, this is what we're trying. To lure a younger audience, saw the street dance battles officially added to the metal events program at the 2020 Paris Games. So this is in an effort to get the younger audience. They, no, they have, <laughs> the people that break danced are now 40. Yeah. They're, the kids, no, what you should do is about, if you want to do something to get the young people, best TikTokers and get them all moving and let's see your TikTok dance or let's see your TikTok video or UFC, UFC gets yeah. the young people. Also approved um, were skateboarding. I thought that was already in there. Sport climbing. Oh, how fucking boring. Oh, my God. This guy is going to climb Mount Rainier. Do you have 140 days to watch him? Nope. I do not. Those three sports will make their Olympic debut at the Tokyo Games, which was postponed because of COVID. They're slated to open July 23rd, 2021, alongside... They made subtractions. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, they took away medals. The slate of 329 medal events in Paris is 10 fewer than in Tokyo. The athlete quota of 2020-24 is 10,500, is around 600 than that. Um, two sports troubled with governing bodies, boxing and weightlifting, saw the biggest cuts to the number of athletes they can have in Paris. Yeah, a lot of jacked up people. But, I mean, if we're going to say weightlifting and boxing because of drugs, how about the people that are running around the track at 130 miles an hour like the pace of a cheetah? We don't think they're maybe. Come on. Come on. The sport of weightlifting could be dropped entirely due to his historic uh, doping problems and IOC concerns over the depth and pace of reform of the international weightlifting program. So they're not even trying that hard. Breakdancing will be called. Da, da, da. Yeah, it was pioneered in the 70s in the United States. Wow. That tells you how old the people are on the IOC. And let's talk about the corruption there. I'm not even going to get into that because it would take 17,000 podcasts and be boring as shit. But I've read a lot about it. And you know what? They're, they are just as corrupt. Oh, sir, oh, in Paris, sport climbing and surfing. Yeah, I'd count that. But that'll be in Tahiti. They already agreed to that. That's fine. The surfer people should get medals. They're out there. It's the only sport I know where at any moment an animal can come and eat you. So, <laughs> yes, they should get medals. It's not like you could be playing soccer and a lion would just emerge from the field and eat a player. And then people keep playing like that didn't even happen. Um <sighs> All increases were rejected, including ocean rowing, Parker, and changes were allowed. Bah, 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 bah. So there you go. You want to watch break dancing? <laughs> Are they going to play the music from then, too? Are they going to play Run DMC? Okay. This made me laugh really hard. Virtual half yeah. This is what's going on with you termites. This is what you people are doing. Nearly half of remote workers... Admit to drinking during the work day. Yeah. That's good for you people. You don't, you can do your work with a drink. Who says you can't? Happy hour starting a little earlier than usual. I'm going to say some of you termites, one of you wrote me that you teach sixth grade. You didn't think it'd be a good idea to have a drink while you were teaching, but you were going to do it while you were grading their papers. Even better. Mm hmm. They pulled 2,000 Americans. And to examine the bad habits, 46% of those working from home have clocked out early to drink at least once during their quarantine time. Oh, come on. Another 45% of these respondents have admitted to taking the liberty of having an alcoholic drink during the workday. As long as you don't pull a Jeffrey Tubin and get caught on a Zoom doing it, who's going to know? Nobody. Yeah. More than six in 10 unemployed employed respondents shared that virtual happy hours of their coworkers has increased their alcohol intake to, in quarantine. Over 52% said they felt the need to drink while watching the news this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's no surprise that 6 in 10 adults share that they'll drink, try to drink less for the remainder of 2020. Too late. Survey finds that having a few extra drinks isn't the only bad habit. They've been snacking more, uh, enjoying more comfort foods, and they've been stress eating. Other bad habits, too much caffeine. I don't even think you can ever. 
have too much caffeine. And staying in pajamas all day. What is wrong with that? What? It's, you're using less clothing, so I guess you wouldn't be buying more clothing, but you're getting the most out of your clothing, and I don't see... It's a cost-savings initiative. It is a cost-savings initiative, and people are more comfortable, and I think people will do more of the right thing when they're comfortable. If I'm uncomfortable, I'm not paying full attention. I can tell you that. I'm never present if I'm not comfortable. That's why, like, even on stage, I just wear jeans, a T-shirt, and some sort of jacket because I'm always freezing. But I'm comfortable. If I have on too high of a heel, say over three and a half inches, I'm not comfortable. So when I'm doing my act, I'm half-assed there. But I'm half-assed there thinking, God damn it, my feet hurt. Why did I do this? Oh, right, I wanted to be taller, and I really like these shoes. But you know, Kathleen, you can't wear these kind of heels. You're going to end up with bunions <laughs> like my grandma, and then I'm going to have to have a bunionectomy, and those don't even work. Most of the time. I think people, I think you should go to fucking work in your, actual work in your pajamas if you want to. Who cares? I've never understood why we're still doing the suit thing on guys. Suit and tie. At some point, we lost the vest. I remember my dad actually wearing a vest, a suit, jacket, vest, and tie. Then the vest went away. Nice. Nice. It's too much clothing. It's too much bullshit. They're always, and they're now, since, how about this? People are late to work and they're at home. <laughs> what? It's true. It's getting harder and harder to get out of bed during the work week and then often oversleep. This isn't an issue exclusive to those working from home either. About 32 respondents said they just aren't getting enough sleep during quarantine. With all these bad habits adding up, 40% of the polls said they'll worry about never being able to snap out of these routines. I'm with you on that. Every comedian, well, not every comedian, <laughs> me and Ron White are on the page of, you know, I I love the road, but that show gets in the way of my fun. Let's say I had a show in Green Bay. Why do I need the show part? Can't I just go straight to St. <laughs> Brendan's and eat a fine dinner and then drink with people in Green Bay? You can. I can, yeah. and I would. But I got to do the show because I don't have enough money for retirement, assuming that I lived uh, according to my financial brother. <laughs> I mean, how long do you think you'll live? I don't know, Pat. I smoked a lot. Probably not that long. 75? All right. Well, then you need more money. You okay. Well, well, you know, how do you want to live? These kind of meetings with financial people are fucking brain damaging. All I know is that the meeting took probably 45 minutes off my life that I probably didn't really have to spare. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'll snap out of this. Probably. Because I'm excited to get back on planes, kind of. And the show will be fun. I don't really have any new jokes, but I'll work on that. Don't you worry, termites. As soon as, here's the procrastinators thing, though. Because I have not been given a, a an actual date of for sure performing... In my mind, just like I did with homework and shit, it's not a thing yet. So don't get all riled up. And don't do work I wouldn't have to do if it doesn't happen because then I wasted that time. I could have been having fun. See? <laughs> See? That's how procrastinator minds work. But once I'm given a timeline, this is for sure. You need to have your shit together by this. Then I don't procrastinate. Then I do it. And I do it in, ahead of time. Um, that's the Catholic rule follower part of me. Oh, it's due on Friday? Motherfucker, I have that done on Wednesday. Bam! But if I'm not given a date, I can understand these people. Um, I was at Statistic Admits H-O-O. H-O-P-W-T-R founder Nick Tarantano. In a statement, he said, I found myself reaching from one too many IPAs, putting on a little weight. That's why you drink this, Nick. It, the IPAs have like 50,000 carbs, 50,000 calories, not this. Mm -hmm. When I was waking up hungover, you will. The IPAs will sneak up on you more days than I could justify. I wanted to break the habit, and when I couldn't find the healthy alternative to beer, I decided to go create it. I wanted something that pays homage to my favorite IPA, but rather than leave me with, leave me with a cloudy head that night, and the next day actually clears the brain fog because it's packed with... No tropics rather than booze. Oh, he created some healthy drink. 
Um, I know. Next year's people's goals are exercising, eating more fruits. It's the same shit. It, don't, let's not blame this on a pandemic, okay? Every New Year's Eve, everybody says all that. <sighs> okay, so that's what you termites are doing at home. I don't blame you. There's a picture of a lady on this article with glasses. It looks like Mariah Carey, half drunk. Good for her. I don't know who she is, just some lady. This is a sto- This story was from something real. It'll be in the show notes. It's not made up. Okay. Termites. Let's talk about some things we need to watch. You guys, just for fun. I don't have a lot to say about it. You should watch the Bee Gees thing on HBO Max. Um, If you are over 45, you probably did not know how successful they were before Saturday Night Fever. I did not. I knew that song because I was... I always laughed at the opening line. I started a joke that started the whole world crying. And I thought, what the fuck did you say? Huh? How? What joke is so bad that the whole world... But I liked his voice. That was Robin. And it's, it's, a, it's a really... Even if you don't care about the BGs, if you just like stories about people, watching what happened to them is crazy and there's only one left the others are dead three out of four and and he's the oldest one is still alive barry he was not my favorite my sister had a poster of andy gibb on her wall that didn't end well my poster as we all know sean cassidy and who else henry henry winkler as the fonzie on a motorcycle holding a monkey i don't know why yep i don't know why that poster was a thing might be there was an episode I didn't see a Happy Days where he had a monkey. I don't, I don't know. And then I got to meet Henry Winkler as an adult for a Comedy Central pilot, and he was everything and more than one could hope for. His voice was so soft and calming. I was like, it's so nice to meet you, and I thought, you should be a hypnotist because you've been talking to me for five minutes, and I believe I don't know where I'm at anymore. His voice was so, it's so calming, and he's so cute. He looks exactly the same except with gray hair, and he was so kind and nice. So shout out to Henry Winkler. But anyway, you should watch the um, Bee Gees thing just because it's great, and it's just one deal, a documentary, very well done. And um, also, which was on HBO um, Max, it's called Heaven's Gate, The Cult of Cults. Now, I thought I knew a lot about Heaven's Gate, but I don't, I didn't, as it turns out. I will tell you this, every cult thing I watch starts out like this. Well, you had to understand the 70s. <laughs> they just use that, like that's a, a coverall. Like, well, what the fuck does that mean? You blame, it, you blame the 60s on the 50s. Oh, the 50s were so conservative that the kids went crazy, and then they, bah, bah, bah. so what's the 70s? I'll have to call Lou. I don't know, because I was a child. So I do, do I understand them? No. I was in my room having my own disco playing, what? Well, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> Stand alone. Um, so Heaven's Gate, you should, this, is, this was like a four-episode deal. I did not know, to, know that this thing started in the 70s, this cult. I guess I figured... Well, I didn't figure anything. I just, here's my only, my only lingering question still to this day. I fucking have not gotten the answer and I've Googled the shit out of it. When they all killed themselves in San Diego in the house, because I've been to San Diego a million times and I have friends that live down there. San Diego is very expensive if you want something nice, really expensive. Well, this cult had one of the nicer homes in San Diego, not, not on the ocean, not that kind of Mitt Romney, La Jolla, nice. Not, we're not talking Romney money. But this thing, how did they afford it? I don't, I still haven't gotten an answer except they designed websites. But still, that's not enough money for that kind of, maybe they said at one point a trust fund baby joined them, but it didn't seem like that person made it all the way to the end. They were the first cult to throw aliens into shit. Like, in the mix. That's why they thought they killed themselves because they decided that there was a spaceship following the hale Bob comet and they would get on that spaceship. I, I don't, you know. <laughs> I watch these things. Um, 
It was founded in the early 70s by Marshall Apple, Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, a Texas music teacher and nurse that he met during a stay in a psychiatric institution. They renamed themselves Bo and Peep. Okay, full stop. <laughs> but, and they told people this. And yet people were like, yeah, okay, that's fine. You can call me Peep. I'll go along with that. Bo and Peep. They invited us to be in their cult. Oh, they assembled in the early 70s. She died. Peep died in 85. Apple White kept the group together, but then he started to lose his shit, and then they all ended up killing themselves. But first, some of them got castrated. I'm not telling people mostly what they don't know. I would say this show wasn't great, but it's pretty good. If you got nothing else going on and you wanted to know more about Heaven's Gate, all I knew is what we saw in the news. They killed themselves. He was King Doe. I remember going on the website and just going, okay, this isn't even close to something that I might go along with. Like, I can be susceptible to some shit, but this was so far out. And then he, he Applewhite told his accolades that, that he was the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay. That God was an alien and they were living in end times. They read the Bible, especially Revelation chapter 11 in the New Testament, a section about two witnesses that would pro- about two witnesses that would prophesy at the end of their prophecy, they would have to battle demons, which Apple and Nettles called the Luciferians. Somebody should name a sports team that. The Luciferians. Right. They already have the New Jersey Devils, but you could be the, the Louisiana Luciferians. People might be offended, I don't know, but if not if you did it in a funny way and you made a funny devil. Right? The funny devil. That's possible. We're the funny mm. devil. This is how they killed themselves. They had black and white, wearing black tracksuits and sneakers, and we all know. That that's the one thing I was going to tell you about this that I thought was kind of crazy. They had Nike tennis shoes on. They ate applesauce. Gross. Laced with barbiturates and washed it down with vodka. That's not the way I'm going out. No. No, 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 no. First of all, I'm not a vodka fan, per se. Like, I don't drink it. Like, my vodka martinis, I have friends that do that. And I'm like, yeah. And every time we're at a bar, my friend Chuck always has one. And I'm like... Let me taste it, because it looks so good. And the olive, I do like the olive. Usually I just want his olive. And then every, literally this happens once every two months. I'll go, well, let me just taste it. And then I taste it and go, Bleh! <laughs> And I overdo it on purpose just to act like an a jackass at this age where I'm like 50 fucking five Cosmos years old. Cosmos are good. What? Cosmos, Cosmos are good because you can't taste the vodka. Right. <laughs> this is fine because I can't taste any vodka in it. <sighs> they weren't killing themselves, they thought, but freeing their souls so they could ascend into a spy, f- spacecraft flying in, the, flying in the wake of the Hale-Bopp comet, which was going to pass Earth. They were going to be taken to their new home in space. Instead, police found their bodies on March 26 with the images of the white and black Nikes poking out from under the purple cloth would be burned into the eyes of a generation. That's right. I'm not even going to go into all the crazy shit. They, they, you can go re- watch the show. It's pretty good. Um, they weren't going to die. They'd go to a higher plane. They'd keep their own body, which I think most of us. Do you want to keep the body you're in, or would you like an upgrade? Meh. I'd like to be taller. I'd like to have <laughs> shoulders. I didn't get any of those. I'd like my one eye that apparently is lazy and wanders. Maybe we could straighten that out in the next one. Hmm. I don't think most people would be all excited about this. I want to tell you about the shoes, though. This is crazy. Um, okay. While Heaven's Gate members were discovered, all were wearing identical black and white Nike Decade sneakers, and the company soon discontinued the style due to its macabre associations. Since then, shoe collector, the shoe have become a collector's item. Get a load of this. An unworn pair, apparently discovered in a storage unit in Arizona, is up for auction on eBay for the asking price of $6,666. Notice the 666. That wasn't lost on me. Bearing Apple White's face as part of its advertising. Nike didn't exactly appreciate the free advertising. We've heard all the jokes, Nike's rep said. The Heaven's Gate incident was a tragedy. It had nothing to do with Nike. The surviving members agree. They say the shoes were purchased in bulk because of their cost, not necessarily their style. They turned out to be... No, they got them a good deal on them as a combination. So... If you want a pair, I had no idea. Now I'm going to go look. I'm going to rabbit hole and find myself a pair of six and a half. 
See if they have them anywhere. Women's. Did they make them in women's too? I think they did because they had women in that cult. They had to have shoes too. Let's do the dollar store thing because I've been talking about it. Okay. Now, there's dollar store. There's dollar. Well, there's dollar general, dollar tree, and family stores. I can honestly, family dollar. I can honestly say I've never been in a family dollar. So I don't know what goes on in there. I have nieces that are 12. And they're twins. Starting since they've been about six, they like to go to the Dollar Tree because everything in the Dollar Tree is actually a dollar. Dollar General, the prices start to get more than a dollar. As the girls would say, well, Dollar General has better quality, but we prefer Dollar Tree. (laughs) That's what their voices sound like. They're still little. But uh, if you'd like to... Self-induce an aneurysm. Take two 10-year-old girls to the Dollar Tree and they each have $20 to spend. If that store needs a bar, I don't know. (laughs) Apparently some have licenses to sell liquor now. Then I should be able to drink it in the store if I bought it because these are the conversations. So, Aunt Kat, do you think I should buy 10 bracelets and 10 markers or... Should I buy grandma's dog a toy? <laughs> Fuck. How about here's some money, buy all of it? No, that's not what I want to do. I want to figure out how to spend my money. Cat, do you think I should buy Jack? That's the little brother. Um, like a toy and then buy myself something and get grandpa the stuff to clean the boat? What? Fuck. <laughs> That's like going on a bad game show with bad guessers. And then you don't even want to go in Dollar General because it's all not a dollar. And then they would bring shit over when they're like seven. How much is this? It's $3.50. How much does that leave me? I don't know. Aunt Cat doesn't do math. (laughs) Four more things. Oh, my God. But anyway, so I've never really paid attention because the dollar... Tree in Dollar General I speak of is in a rural area in the Ozark. So it's not like a city, you know, it's not poor or rich. It's just rural. And I never thought about the ones. So, and bizarrely enough, this is a story from the New Yorker about all these types of stores, but mainly those three. Um, And this is weird because this is where I grew up in St. Louis. So, uh, North St. Louis, well, they're, they're talking about North St. Louis, a mostly black and working class part of the town, fell into ec- economic decline. This is years ago. They used to have all these good stores, and they all went away. Almost all of those have disappeared. The St. Louis's population has dropped from 850,000. So the malls, all the stores are gone in. But a new form of retail has moved in. The discount chains Family Dollar and Dollar General now have 40 stores in St. Louis. That is crazy. And its immediate suburbs, about 15 of them in North St. Louis. This is where people who remain in the neighborhood can buy detergent and pet toys and food and underwear and motor oil and flashlights, strollers and mobs. We know. It's like a mini Target. They also have non-perishable frozen and frozen foods. Um, There are little Walmarts. Okay, I really had to go through this article. Um, But here's the thing. The amount of crime going on at these places in the city ones. I don't know about the rural ones. This article didn't get into it. And the, the bullshit they put on the employees... They just tell them, you know, you're on your own, basically. Um, There's a lot of people coming up. Like, this guy came into St. Louis. He fired a gun down the center of an aisle. He hit the guy that worked there, so he killed them. Then he took the money out of the guy's pocket, which was his paycheck. Then the guy never got compensated at all. He was one of the three homicides in six months. Three murders in in six months in two discount chains in the St. Louis area. One, a man and woman started arguing in a car at the parking lot of Family Dollar on West Florissant Avenue, very close to where I grew up. Just outside the city line, he shot her once in the head, killing her less than a month then after the other guy who got shot in the head. A 65-year-old woman was shopping at the Family Dollars on the Rock Road, saying the Charles Rock Road, that's up north too, when a seemingly mental ill 34-year-old grabbed steak knives from a shelf in the store and stabbed her to death. Now, these people working at these fucking places are making minimum wage, and wait till you hear what the CEOs are making. And they're doing nothing. They will provide no security. Like, I never thought about being afraid of going in to a dollar store. Even if I was in, like, the city, in a rough part of the city, it just wouldn't be where I'd be think to, like, I might hesitate 
like in a corner bar, I might go, well, I don't know what's going on in there, especially because we got alcohol in there. People could get drunk and stab each other or do crazy things. St. Louis has its areas that can lend itself to that. Every t- date they go into Dayton, Ohio in here, all ca- on the bad side of Dayton, I don't know what they consider the bad side of Dayton. They imply that it's the west side. I'm not saying that. Don't yell at me, people of Dayton. Um, it's just where the most were. So they, they provide no security. You're making minimum wage, and you're supposed to stop these crimes or, or at least not get yourself killed, but yet you're not allowed to have a gun. You can't. So how are you supposed to... Um, since the beginning of 2017, employees have been wounded in shooting or pistol whippings at least in at least 31 robberies and at least seven other incidents, employees have been killed. The violence has not let up in recent months when requirements for customers to wear masks made it even harder for the clerks to detect shoppers who are bent on, or on robbery. In May, a worker at a family dollar in Flint, Michigan, was fatally shot after refusing entry to a customer without a mask. See, no, you can't put that on the people. The Kroger by my house has a cop, and I even saw some redneck hillbilly go, he told him to put a mask on the cop. He goes, fuck you. And that cop, what? Wrong thing to say, hillbilly, hillbilly, hillbilly Haywood. He got his ass kicked and handcuffed her because he attacked the cop back. Um, a number of incidents can be explained in part by the store's uh, ubiquity. There are now more than six. $16,000 generals and nearly 8,000 family dollars in the United States. 16,000 of them. But I've also seen quite a few that have um, closed. They don't, I don't know what's about that. Uh, the stores are often in high crime neighborhoods where there simply aren't other businesses for criminals to target. Um, and I keep going. Let me, um, the likelihood of um, the likelihood of crime, depending on the three elements, it's a motivated when we know what causes crime. We don't have to go into all that. Um, then they go into the history. I did not know these things were formed. Um, in, in like 1939 was the start of these things. Cause they would just sell the runoffs to things. And then by 1955, the Turners had three stores across Kentucky and Tennessee and then they started, they held the sales called Dollar Days. It's, it's just interesting. I didn't know how it started. If you want to read all about it, it's in the New York Magazine. That's where I found the article. But the, the amount of um, crime, I just had no idea. And now there's another one by my house. And I've always thought it was weird. There's just like in the windows, there's all these posters of, of stuff like for sale. But it's not a, really a sale poster. It's just like a promotional poster of say Clorox or something, right? But the, the the employees are like, you know, maybe if we took down the posters, the cops could see in the fucking store. How about that? And Dollar Tree says no. They're just appalling. The, 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 the main people in charge of these things, appalling. They're ignoring all of the danger. Well, they acknowledge it, and then they just don't do anything. Um, I'm going to get to that, though, because I got it. Um... The chain's executives are candid about what is driving their growth. This is why they're expanding, widening income inequality and the decline of many city neighborhoods and entire swaths of the country. The economy is continuing to create more of our core customer. Look how this guy, Todd Vesos, yeah, Vesos, he's the CEO of Dollar General. He told the Wall Street Journal this. He's happy about it. The economy is continuing to create more of our core customer. You mean poverty-stricken people? That is not something to celebrate. Oh, my God. Because they're in poor, heavily concentrated in poor towns and neighborhoods, many middle and upper middle class customers are unaware of their ubiquity or the frequency of armed robberies and shootings. Yeah, I didn't know that. In 2017, the manager of a Dollar General in Baltimore, where the writer lives, was shot and killed as he closed. He was closing up, and then this reporter got into it. Um, Someone and then. Da, 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 da. The crime people have looked into this and said, while dollar stores sometimes fill a need in cash trap communities, growing evidence suggests that these stores are not merely a byproduct of economic distress. They're the cause of it. Well, I don't know that I agree with that. They didn't come in. They came in like vultures when there was a carcass, and the carcass was the stores that had left. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot I'll blame them for, but that not that. I also didn't know you could get cash in these places. I've never looked because... My customers that I drove, the twins, had their own cash. Sadly, 
They had a lot of cash to figure out how to spend in a dollar store and cat. Now, do you think? Oh, my God. Here's what I think, ladies. Buy whatever you want. I'll pay for all of it. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> Put it on a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for all of it. You can get whatever you want. Have I spent $20? Nope. Keep getting shit. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, this is another story. She goes in. This is a really good, well-written story. It's way too long for all this, but I'm trying to get to. Um, Dayton, it's just gone off. There's just people being shot left and right at these places, and it's the west side of the city. Now they have liquor licenses, and the city said, please don't put liquor licenses in these ones, and then they did it anyway because they're just like, it's just going to cause more crime because then people are going to want to steal the liquor, which I completely understand. If I was so motivated, what do I want in a Dollar General if there's no alcohol? There, also, why are you robbing Dollar General? Everything's a Dollar Tree. Everything's a dollar. There can't be that much money, cash in the thing. Even if my nieces came in and spent all their dollars, that'd only be $40. Is that worth it? Maybe if you're super broke, I don't know. I'd rather, I'd go for a gas station before I would do this just because people are buying. I don't know. There's cash there too. Okay. In 2018, Dollar General CEO re received more than $10 million in total compensation, nearly 800 times the median pay for workers at the company. Philbin at Dollar Tree, the other CEO, was paid the same amount. Okay. Now, I don't, usually agree what, with 100% of what Bernie Sanders says because I think Papa Bernie's a little much. <laughs> I keep saying that income inequality is out of hand. This I agree with. This is what Bernie's trying to say, though. Eight, ten million bucks, the people are making dog shit money and getting shot at. I mean, when does somebody get pissed at the CEO pricks? And they do nothing. Then they said both companies did declined how many how many stores had armed security. Randy Gillier, a Family Dollar spokesman, said in written responses to the question to ensure the integrity of our security systems and procedures, we do not publicly share specific details. And then the writer wrote, none of the ten dollar stores I visited in Dayton had a security guard present. I've never seen a security person in the ones in rural America. Never. I've never been into the city ones. I had no need to go in, but you know. If I've got Ewok and Shwewok in the back, and I'm going to go to the, let's go to the dollar store. Shwewok. And Ken, can we go to the dollar store? Yeah, sure. Um, fam, the family dollar manager for the region stretching across Interstate 70 from Dayton to St. Louis said the company deployed security guards at only a couple stores in his region in the St. Louis and, in St. Louis and Cincinnati. They hired a security firm, ADT, to upgrade the store's cameras. <laughs> It's not safe. And they want people, so then they get pissed that they don't have a workforce. Well, why not? Because the word got out. So I'm the, it's a great article if you guys want to read it because it, it, I had no idea. We'll put it in the show notes. Put it in the show notes. Um, who knew? Oh, look, it's Lewis. Should we answer? Look, it's Lewis. There's a picture of me and Lewis Black. Hold on. Ow. Lewis, I'm doing my podcast. Pod podcast. Pod podcast. Would you like to say anything to the people? Huh? I'm doing the podcast right now. Would you like to say anything to the people? Yes, I would like to wish them all a very, very <laughs> merry Christmas and the happiest of New Years and a, a year of joy and comfort. Things are really <laughs> rolling along toward a wonderful, wonderful moment in time. I feel and. Uh, I couldn't be more positive about things. <laughs> I feel that you're jacked up on a Kringle right now. <laughs> I wish I was just getting ready to go right in. That's why I was calling you. I was going to the refrigerator and getting one. I said, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to call Kathleen. <laughs> it's, it's time to give her a buzz. Do you have your fan? Do you have your fantasy team in line? It's almost kickoff. I do, yeah, and some of the advice that I've been given by some of the experts makes me an expert because their choices were just as shitty as mine. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah, boy, you really ought to start him. I said, okay, I will. Well, you know, no. Obviously not. That's who I thought about starting. Yeah, let's start this guy. 
Let's start one of that. Let's start Marvin Jones, the Detroit uh, uh, wide receiver, because he's really the top receiver they got. He's got to be rolling along. Well, then you bring in the second string quarterback, who apparently uh, went blind during the fishing accident, I guess, <laughs> and uh, couldn't seem to find him. Unbelievable. Okay, we're talking about running back. I got their whole offense, and they had no offense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're getting too hard. This is too. Um, I'm enjoying the battle of the basement in the fantasy league, Kathy. Well, it's and... not the basement. It's third place. There are others in the basement. We know who they are. No, I know. I'm not. I'm in. I'm battling for third. I'm talking about the basement. The dwellers in the league trying to eke out one last thing. We're talking about the Zodiac Killer movie right now, the show. Oh. Do you would you recommend it? I thought it was great. The, the, you mean the one with uh, what's his name? The uh, no the the four part the most dangerous oh, animal. That, the, the series, yeah, I recommend that. Are you kidding me? Okay, it's a rabbit hole you can fall down. And for those of you who think that you've been drifting, uh, you got miles to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's really well worth your time. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Well worth it. Put it right there. Put it in your little thing. Uh, you know, whatever they call it. Uh, Q. You know, like, or I'm ready to watch. Or, uh, Q. It's going to not make me feel. Oh, Q, yeah, that's it, Q. <laughs> Put it in your Q. Put it first in your Q. It's a good week to watch it just before the new year hits. Yeah, well, so right. You'll come into it feeling very relaxed. Um, You know, it's funny you call because I actually said I'd have to call. Lewis and ask about this because you're just um, a few years older than me. Maybe you have the answer. Every cult thing I watch, because I watched the Heaven's Gate one, which was fine. Yeah, that, that, that's in my queue. It's good. It's not great, yeah. but it's good. Uh, it's a, really informative, and they have a lot of good footage. But why, how come every cult thing I watch starts with, well, you have to understand the 70s? <laughs> what? Well, it's true. But you always say the 60s were crazy. Yeah, the 60s were crazy. But what, the 60s were crazy, but they made the people crazy. So it, they arrived in the 70s nuts. And so You mean the like the children like, of the Woodstock babies? Those people? Yeah. No, not the Woodstock babies, but the, the Woodstock babies themselves, the Woodstock people themselves. Oh, you mean by the time that it rolled around to the 70s, they had gone crazy? They had really kind of gone, well, what, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to uh, get things together? And a lot of them ended up in cults. <laughs> I mean, I had friends, I mean, I, I told you, I followed that, uh, I, I was in, uh, I had been in love with this woman, and then, uh, but, you know, I kind of, but, and then she had, we had, you know, we had, split up and all of that, but she was still a good friend. But she ended up following that 13-year-old guru. What What 13-year-old what guru? There was a 13-year-old pudgy guru that uh, <laughs> was running around the country. He had a lot of cars what? and stuff. It was, he was huge for a while. Was, I can't even remember what his name was. I'm sure they'll... There's, there's people who are listening who probably had a... Well, I'm going to write it down. So your description right now is pudgy... Pudgy, oh, yes. pudgy, thirteen-year-old. Yeah, that was when he started. He was thirteen. He was in pudgy. Did he? Chunky. <laughs> I wouldn't even say chunky. Chunky could imply muscle. Wow. Did he become less chunky as the years went on? I don't know. I stopped following. I but I literally kind of um, started uh, checking. You know, because I couldn't believe she started following. Uh, this kid, and so I kind of looked into, and I had another friend from Chapel Hill, an actor, uh, that also ended up in this. And uh, wait, same I, one, the same same pudgy person, yeah, following the same guy, yeah. Where did he? And not, and not together, you know, and they, not together, but totally in separate areas. Where did um? Where was his location? This pudgy guru. Oh, well, that would have helped in your goddamn police you know, description. Like, <laughs> I just asked you for a description like an eyewitness, and you gave me pudgy, chunky, 13-year-old. You forgot Indian? 
Well, yeah, I did. He came from India and lived in the United States, and then your couple people you knew followed him around. Do oh, you? No, no, he came from India, but you know he was he he, he went back to India. You know, I mean his his did, home base was India. Did your friends go back there with him? No, they. But you know, he would go around the world. He was in England. That's where uh, she. That's where I first heard of it. She called from England to tell me that she was in some dance company that his. That, did you, did she ever call you back after all that? Yeah, I mean, I did talk to her, but I followed it around. I followed the thing around. Did she get out of it? Were, yeah, and a lot of those kids at that point, I felt were, you know, were lost souls. They were being given, you know, much like, uh, but less like TM, Transcendental Meditation, you know, because that boomed, you know. Yeah, because one, one of the Beatles liked it. Yeah, transcendental yeah, meditation. Do you know where the biggest transcendental me- meditation temple is in the world? Well, maybe not the world, but the United States. Um, I would say uh, Biloxi. Laughlin. No, it's um, it's in Iowa. I don't know where in Iowa, but it's in Iowa. No. Yeah, because one of the Beatles went there, and then the Iowans couldn't believe a Beetle was coming. Come on. They thought it was as, a real Beetle. <laughs> yeah, as other Midwest people wouldn't have, uh, Missouri wouldn't have believed it either. Um, but a lot of, but what I found when I kind of went in, they would have these meetings, I found that, uh, you know, they, they were doing a meditation, and what I found was is that, uh, you know, they were, they were kind of, um, they were kind of, you know, damaged goods. Uh, I don't know if it was from drugs or family or whatever. You mean you're... It, uh, not all of them, but I'd say, you know, because my friend wasn't, uh, but it was like, you know, 70% or, or, or at least more than half were seemed to be a little off the, you know... <laughs> you know the, well, there, you know, sign. there's a guy in the Heaven's Gate thing that would probably be somewhere near your age group and he he got out of it but he's still very torn and he's very messed up and he still feels like they were right Bo and peep the leaders kingdo and peep yeah, I and know. Yeah, I love that. I he didn't that i can't remember it well he didn't kill himself obviously and he didn't he didn't go for the ride on the comet the spaceship behind the comet but he um i mean it fucked with his head so much he's just like you know He's here, but not really, you know. Like, yeah, because he feels there badly. Were a lot of people around who were looking for guidance. Well, you know. All right. Here's my last question for you. This is uh, this, I, and you can feel my f- important question. You, you, I've got a question for you before I go. Okay. You know, what's I'll your? Wait. You'll wait. Okay. Because I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, here's my question. Um, yeah. have you ever heard of Baba Vanga? Well, I'm not even close. <laughs> wow. Never? No, should I have? Well, I, I had... It sounds like a conjugation of a Spanish word. Vangi, Vanga, Vango, Vanga. Well, also known as Grandma Vanga? Real name, Vangelia Pandeva Gushterov. No. Where are you coming no. up with this stuff? <laughs> she is one, well, I know because, I don't know, I saw something all on the History Channel a long time ago. It was well, no... Unless it was on the, you know, food, you know, unless it was in, like, uh, coming, uh, you know, she bakes some sort of a pie that I might like. Mm. <laughs> No, she's not a baker. Baba Vanga no. ugh, is a Bulgarian mystic. She's dead now. But she predicted. Wow. She predicted. She's blind. She was blind. Blinded at age like twelve. A tornado picked her up and threw her like to from Bulgaria to I don't know. China, so, <laughs> China as Trumpy would say, China. She landed bigly in China. Uh, no, 
she was thrown a few miles and then she went blind after that. And then she became a mystic. And do you want to know what she's predicted correctly? Listen to this. Um, you scared to hear it? Uh, what? Are you scared? Well, hold on. I'm a little worried. You should be. <laughs> she doesn't have a lot of good things to say for 2021, except for there will be a cure for cancer, she says, but she didn't say what cancer. Here's the shit she's gotten. Right. Well, maybe she meant, it, maybe she, since she was Bulgarian, she couldn't pronounce it, but maybe it was for canker sores. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she, here's the thing she's gotten right. 2004, she predicts, predicted the tsunami, the one that hit, um, Thailand. Remember that? She said a huge, no, come on. I'm serious. A huge wage will cover a big coast covered with people and towns and everything will disappear beneath the water. Everything will melt just like ice. And then How to, did you stumble on to her? Because I told you there was a show on the history channel. It was about Nostradamus and they included Baba Vanga. Because she, she, she just died not long ago. She's a modern mystic. Like, all of the Brezhnev world leaders have gone to see her. She's not, she's very well known in the mystic world. And clearly you're not up to speed. On, Did you know her? Oh, yes. Well, no. Yes, because I saw the show on the History Channel. So then I went down that rabbit hole. But this is years ago that I saw the thing. And I, I just clicked on it because it was Nostradamus. And then they threw in as a bonus, Baba Vanga. Well, you never told, shared this with me. And I didn't I share it with you it. because you, you, here's what else she predicted, 9-11. She predicted um, uh, horror for the United States, warning in 1999 that, after, that the American brethren will fall after being attacked by the steel birds. So she got that right. She gotten a lot of stuff right, but she also got a lot of shit wrong. She also predicted the end of Europe, which I agree. A lot of people go, well, you know, Europe didn't really cease to exist. Well, the EU is being dissolved. I think that counts. Europe as a unit is no longer a unit. So she was right. <laughs> All right, well, here's what, because this is... Uh, well, I was going to talk about those. The, the, somebody else solved one of the Zodiac's puzzles, but it doesn't really say much, so I'll do that next yeah, week. This, yeah, this is a recipe, it, she, <laughs> it was a recipe for onion dip. Um, <laughs> do you want to hear what she uh, has for 2021? Yeah, for onion dip, not, you're not done with Frenches. She died in 1996 at the age of 85. She says 2021 wow. will be a year of... Um, large scale violence event in the natural world. The world will suffer from great disasters. The consciousness of people will change. Difficult times will come. People will be divided by their faith. Faith. Why well, see that's happening right now. We're witnessing devastating events that will change the fate. However, don't worry. There's good news. She said the 2021 will be when a cure for cancer is found. At the beginning of the 21st century, humanity will get rid of cancer. That day will come when cancer will be tied with iron chains. Um, she says Trump will apparently suffer from a mysterious disease. She said he will become sick with a mysterious de disease that will leave him death, deaf and cause brain trauma. Trump? Really? Trumpy, yeah. How did she know Trumpy? How did she know that? She didn't say by name. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, no, she said the forty-fifth president of the United States. So she. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Vladimir Putin is going to try to be killed by somebody in his own deal. Man, that's probably every fucking Friday. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. And um, that's about it. But you know, they. She's. You should. Nobody's really done a good movie about her life, and I wish they would, but they haven't. But, I mean, famous, hold on, I'm going to tell you who's gone to see her. Like, when you go, who is this? I did not know either until I just accidentally watched a show about Nostradamus, and then they threw, they threw her in as a bonus. She's continued wow. to, to, this is, you had to go up into the mountains of Bulgaria to find her. And she was blind, so she didn't really get around too much on her own. Um, uh, these are the people that have gone to see her. Leonid Bre Brezhnev sought her counsel. Um, um, 
That's it. I thought there was more famous people. Everybody. They took her seriously, though. They all took They gave her. Oh, they put her on payroll. I forgot to say that. The, the whole country of Belgium put her on payroll. Belgium? No, Bulgaria. Oh, Bulgaria. Sorry. Well, why not Belgium? They should. <laughs> you know, really get your story. You know, if you're going to tell me a story, get it straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait. I got to find this in my story. Hold on. Oh, shit. See? I wasn't expecting you to call. And, well, I'm uh, sorry. No, it's been great. It's been great talking to you right before kickoff. Let me see if I can just find this thing, though. It, it made me... Um, oh, yeah. Also, she predicted that 2021 is the year that a dragon will take over the planet. A strong dragon will seize humanity. Three giants will unite. Some people will have red money. I see the numbers 100, 5, and many zeros. Interpreters presume the dragon is China. The three giants could be Russia, India, and China. They interpret that the money could be the 100 yuan and the 5,000 ruble notes that are both red in color. Mm -hmm. I don't buy that. I don't. Well, the Canadian $50 bill. I'm just the Canadian $50 bill is red, the power says. Of my non visualization of it uh, will, will be a help in terms of it not happening. I'm trying to find um, But I will say what did happen, which is close to her prediction. Yeah. But early was just that I found out today that uh, apparently they're uh, it looks like they're using my face in their in a, a Bitcoin ad. Really? Yeah. Is it for my Ethereum? I hope so. For, no. Uh, what do you mean for my Ethereum? <laughs> <laughs> I own Ethereum. Not all of it. Some of it. Ethereum. Oh, God. oh my gosh. I, I'm going to have to send you some articles. Within the Bitcoin world, there's Litecoin, there's cryptocurrencies of different kinds. Ethereum is the one I bought. Well, and I took it, I threw. Well, I don't like being used as a, in an ad. Can you send me that ad? I want to see it. Are you happy? Yeah. What Have you seen the ad? I mean, it's not really an ad. It's I'll send it to you. It came on. Uh, it's it's a it's, it's like a uh, visual. It ended up on uh, on. Uh, I woke up and looked at my Twitter thing this morning before I sent out a something. And, uh, <laughs> I saw this thing. I was like, "Are you kidding?" Me? Wait, it's so it, I'll send it to you. Is it your headshot? Yeah, it's a, it's a headshot of me on a thing that says about Bitcoin. I'll send it to you. You maybe you know. Maybe you, you won't know any more than I will, but I, I sent it off to see if somebody should help me. Oh. You know, they well, can at least give me a Bitcoin for advertising Bitcoin. Yeah, that's really strange. That is strange, and of all the people on Earth. Well, you yeah, you don't even know what it is. I know it's a cryptocurrency. Well, you didn't know about Ethereum five seconds ago. No, because I don't. I didn't break it down. Well, Bitcoin's PayPal starting to accept them. The same. I but, know. Well, I don't know. They shouldn't be using your face without your permission. No, that's really odd. Yeah. Well. All right. I was trying but to. The big question for you finally was that did you know that um, they told me that one of my gifts arrived. One of your gifts has arrived here. Yeah. From Etsy. From, from Etsy? Yeah. Well, I've got it's like... supposed to arrive today or uh, yesterday. Well, nothing came yesterday from Etsy. All I got... yet. should be there. All I got yesterday. It's there. Did you send me Dolly Parton's Dixie Fixin's cookbook? No, you know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know about it. That's the problem. I'm so yeah, mad no. I can't find this part about her getting put, put on the payroll of a, of a nation. The show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. Okay, well, enjoy the rest of the uh, the, the podcast. Yeah, we're done now. Pleasure. We're over. We're done. But that was great that you called in. God, I was 30 points up. I had like a shot until uh, I started those Detroit guys. I actually had like a shot. To not that I wasn't going to win, but it, but it made it interesting. You're still going to win the league. You know. You're still going to win the league. So no whining. No, no crying. 
I'm not crying. Yeah. Huh? You know who? You know I'm, who? I'm very. I'm crying about my other team, which had Camara. The and they, the other guys had Camara, and it's just crushing me. I'll come in fourth in that league, and Dylan Baker will be the champion. So that made me feel good. One of my guys, they let off injured reserve and forgot to tell me. Well, I started Antonio Gibson, even though he probably has no foot. <laughs> You don't need two feet, depending on how good you can hop. Um, all right, we'll hang up. I will call you back for real. I mean, this was real too. I gotta find this thing about. I'm so mad about finding. Can't I had this? So I was so excited because I couldn't believe a country, and it makes me like them more that they just put her on the payroll because they considered her a national treasure. Well, there's a place there we should go to. There's this one of the cities in Bulgaria. That oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold on. In 1966, following her increasing her increases in popularity and overwhelming numbers to people wanting to see her, the Bulgarian government put Baba Vanga on the state payroll. She was given two secretaries and a panel to interview potential patients. In addition, the Institutes of Suggestology and Parapsychology in Sophie and Beatrick studied her psychic abilities. She, wow. she was given more assistance than you've ever had in your life. Yeah. She, you know what made me think about it, too? You, when you see the pictures of her? I wonder if this is where the guy from Game of Thrones got the idea about the seer. Go look at a really? oh, go, Google, yeah. a, Google. Uh, I'll text you her name, Baba Vanga. But the picture right. looks not as, like, the seer in Thrones was really kind of distorted, uh, distorted looking man. But it it definitely... Might have spurred an idea. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he's a hack, but maybe he lifted this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to go. Right, I'll send you this thing and uh, my Bitcoin thing, and I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Termites. So something happened to the camera, um, and there's a Lewis called. Maybe that's what did it. Sometimes weird shit happens because why? This show isn't professional. We've talked about that many times. Semi-professional. It sucks, though, but Lewis um, was super funny this morning for no apparent reason. But I'm pretty sure you're flexible, termites, and you can handle this. And it's worth it. He was very funny this morning. Sometimes he's not so funny in the morning. He was very funny. Not on purpose, either. Just very jolly. Probably because it's, it was, it's Sunday and he could watch some football. Okay, so... Then that will happen, and um, all right, termites. We talked about a lot today, and I can't get it, wait to get in next week because although Lewis calling was great, um, it messed up. It didn't mess up, but I left out some parts of my stories, so I'll get to those next week. And in the meantime, you're good termites. You're worthy termites. This will be the last you see my blinking hat. Isn't that sad? You can keep it. No. I'm not going to keep my blinging hat. It won't be special. That's only for the holidays. Um, and the holidays will be over. Maybe I'll bring it out for my birthday. But that's not till next fall. So um, get yourself some pizza dip ranch. Do you have any ranch? <laughs> for two days. Do you have any ranch? The Billionaire Murders book. Great. Um, pickle juice. Bloody Mary. Great. You guys. Great. Let's see, what is the date? Yeah, I guess I'll see you next year. It's so fucking corny. I hate it when people that ding, ding, ding. Okay, we all get it. It's only funny to little kids, and it should be because they've never heard it. To those of us that are a thousand years old, there's just no need to say that. My dad really gets a kick out of cornball shit like that. All right, termites, I'm going to put you to bed. You ready? Poor sheet up. You're a worthy termite. You're a good termite. You've made it. You've made it through 2020. So you know what? Tuck yourself in. Go to sleep. Wear your pajamas to work. Drink during the day. It's fine. That's it. Night-night termites.